44. All right. Acts chapter 27, starting at verse 21. And it reads, but after a long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night, the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Let's skip down to verse 30. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea under color, as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Let's go down to verse 41. And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground and the four parts stuck fast and remained unmovable but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they should swim and commanded they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. And the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they all escaped safe to land. This word is for the dear saints of God this morning. There are a lot of things going on, but the Lord wants me to tell you that you will survive this. You will survive this. And I'm speaking in a lot of different areas because there are people who have heard from God and they launched ministries and now it seems like they're at a standstill. And, but I want to tell you that you will survive this. Somebody here that is listening to me, you're facing challenges like you've never faced in your entire life. But you will survive this. Glory to God. You will survive this. You will survive this. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the, the Lord. This entire chapter of Acts 27 is a vivid picture of the Apostle Paul's voyage to Rome. This man of God, this anointed vessel who was called of God to preach the gospel to the Gentiles finds himself on a prison ship. Yeah, that's right. I will survive this. Yes. The Apostle Paul was beaten by the Jews for the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to crucify him like they did Christ. But his Roman citizenship prevented them from doing so. 
So they had to send him before a Roman court to be tried. So the apostle Paul is in protective custody under a centurion, which is a commanding officer. Uh, his name is Julius, and he's under the emperor Caesar. And Julius was directly responsible for Paul. So he wanted to make sure that the ship got there and that it got to its destination on time. But they did not know it at the time. But Paul going to Rome for trial was in the plan of God for his life. This was God's way of getting the gospel to Rome. Because Paul's destiny, his assignment, was to preach the gospel to the highest person in the land. And that was the emperor. And so these circumstances set him up for God to use him. The Holy Spirit gives us great detail in this chapter concerning their voyage to Rome. The Holy Spirit is very explicit. We see in this chapter, and you can read it in your time, how many prisoners there were on the ship, what the weather was before and during the voyage, the stops they made, what they did after sailing directly into a storm. And I'm a very visual person, and when I looked at this chapter, I could see and I could feel the fear and the panic and the utter hopelessness as they are being sucked into this great tempest and their lives were truly in jeopardy. And so as they were sailing into Rome, they reached a particular port. They stopped at this port and Paul transferred, he got on the ship from Alexandria, headed to Italy. While there, they start having trouble. The winds were unfavorable and they struggled with great difficulty. I want you to see this and they had to sail slowly and they lost a lot of time because the weather was becoming dangerous and the weather was actually fighting against them. Paul being led of the Lord tells them, he said, sirs, I perceive that this voyage will not go well if we keep on going. He said, there will be some loss of cargo and hurt of the ships and danger of our lives as well. He told them, let's stay here. And let's not sail out. Paul was led of the Lord and he hacked the word of the Lord. But the centurion, the scripture tells us, he listened to the ship's captains and to the owners more than he did Paul. By the way, Paul was just a prisoner. What does he know? We are experts at this. They were already behind schedule. The ship that they were on was a seafaring ship. And so this was big business for them. There was valuable cargo on board. And so they wanted to go forward at all cost to do business. I'm going somewhere with this. They didn't care about the lives of the people on board. They were more concerned with commerce. That sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? And so they would say, listen, we don't want to stay here. We don't want to park like you're telling us to. Let's get out there. Let's go. It's not going to be that bad. 
So the centurion did not listen to the word of the Lord. Paul said that lives are going to be in danger. Things are going to be lost. Let's stay put. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Let's stay put. But the centurion took the word of others over the word of the Lord. And we must make very sure that the voice of God is louder than any other voices. Do you hear me? Don't allow the voices in the news to drown out what God is saying. Whatever God says must take preeminence. If God says go left and they say go right, then we must go left. We must follow the directions of the Lord. And so the seafarers thought that they could make it. Oh yeah, they thought that they could make it to the destination safely because they looked at the wind and, and the south wind was just blowing softly and blowing slightly. It did not look like it would be too bad. God told them through the apostle to stay put and to don't go right now, but they didn't listen. Often we assume that we can be successful because of how something looks at the present time. But understand this, God knows what is going to happen down the road. And you will always, always end up in disaster when you act independently of God. Proverbs 14 and 12 and Proverbs 16 and 25 tells us that there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. Mm -hmm. But the end thereof are the, ways, are the ways of death. And so God is going to show them in this text. And he's going to show us and he's showing us as well that the only way we will make it through this is that we must do it his way and not our way. Praise God. So they went on and they ran into the scripture says a great tempest. It was a typhoon. It was a hurricane on the water. My God. The ship was caught and it couldn't bear up the wind. And the text here describes the many things that they tried to do to keep the ship afloat. And this parallels and speaks about man's feeble attempts to try to hold together what he does not even have the power to hold together. And I can see them struggling, trying to figure out what they could do. Oh, let's try this. No, let's try this. Let's put the sails up. No, let them down. Let's throw the cargo overboard. Come on, let's put the anchor down. But everything they tried still came to no avail. Whenever we refuse to listen to God or to go God's way. Y'all better hear me. We take ourselves through unnecessary hell, through unnecessary trouble, through unnecessary trauma, waste time that we don't have and waste resources that we really need all because we won't listen. My God. Many are trying in this pandemic to figure out what to do to fix this predicament. And sad to say, it is not the, only the world that is doing this, but many in the church are trying to do this as well. Having conferences and, and, and brainstorming sessions and Zoom meetings and trying to figure out what do we need to do? But God 
Only God can fix this. And I've been saying this since March. Only God can fix this. And so the wind continued to batter the ship. And they threw tackling overboard. And verse 20 tells us that when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, it says, and no small tempest lay upon us. It says, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. The sun blotted out, the storm rather blotted out the sun and the stars and all hope was gone that they should be saved. Y'all hear me? They had done everything they could and saw that all of their efforts were futile. They had run out of natural options. And often God will allow us to get to the point of no other options but him. Y'all hear me? Had they listened they could have avoided all of this. And often God has to do the same thing to us because more than we would like to admit, sometimes we just don't listen. Anybody want to be honest? Can anybody be honest? A lot of things that we've encountered even since we've been saved, come on, could have been avoided if we had just listened. Come on here. Your mama told you. Your friends told you. Your brother told you. Your father told you. But you just wouldn't listen. Come on here. Don't do that. Don't go there. Don't make that decision. Leave them alone. Don't buy that. Wait. Don't fool with them. They're going to leave you holding the bag, but you didn't listen. Come on. Can anybody be honest like me? I could throw up both hands and both feet and say, yes, yes, yes. I've done that. And so you didn't listen and they left you holding the bag and the baby. Oh, come on. I can't get nobody to be honest. A lot of things we don't listen to simply because we don't see it at the time. Mm -hmm. But God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And God declares the end from the beginning. God gives us instructions based on his will, based on what shall be, not just what is for us at the present time. And God gives us instructions to prepare us for what is coming. And so we must trust in what God says even when we cannot see it. And we must be obedient to whatever his instructions are. Let's go a step further with this. Can I go? And even though to go on anyway was not Paul's decision. Hear me, church. But Paul was drugged into the storm with them. Although Paul told them and they didn't listen, but here he is going through a storm that wasn't even his fault. Y'all got to hear me. His predicament was a result of someone else's decision and he was affected by it. Earlier this year, I heard so many prophecies saying that the church wasn't going to be affected by this. And no, no, no. The saints are not going to have to go through any of this. And now the narrative have changed. But I'm so glad. And they have the narrative have changed. And they've got to find another prophecy. And they've got to find another message. But I'm so glad that God has given me a message that does not change regardless of whether there are good times or regardless of whether there are bad times. God is the only one that can fix this. And to be real honest with you, God is not in the prevention business. And we've heard so much Franken faith 
preached and we've heard a franken gospel. Come on here. They decreed and declared that this thing would not come near their dwelling. But not only did it come near the dwelling, it knocked the whole house down. Come on here. It wasn't Paul's fault now that they left Crete, but yet he was affected just like they were. Y'all don't hear me. Many times we are in storms that are not our fault. Come on here. But we are affected just like others. And so I don't know why we feel as if we have to put up a facade and that it is spiritual to pretend, now, now let me be honest, to just lie like everything is 100 with you. But the life of faith is not one that is obscured from difficulties and dilemmas. I want to help you out. The real life of faith is one that goes through trials, not around them. Do you hear what I said? No one had eaten on this ship for a while. But Paul finally stood up and gave a moment of what I call, I told you so. He said, you should have listened and not left Crete. You would have avoided all of this damage and loss. But he wasn't really giving them a serious, serious reprimand here, but he was laying the foundation for what he was about to say next. And one thing I love about God is that he doesn't just whip us and leave us wounded. You hear me? If he hurts you, he hurts you to heal you. If he chastises you, and if you are a child of God, he chastises you to not to kill you, but to correct you. Come on. If he cuts you, he cuts you to get something out of you. And once he gets some, get it out of you, he sews you back up together again. That's the thing I love about God. And so the apostle Paul tells them after he said, you should have listened and you would have avoided this. Okay, there are a lot of things that we didn't listen to, but now we're in the situation. God told us to return to the altar. He told us to fast and pray, and we brought a whole lot of things upon ourselves. Come on, let's be honest. Come on. And so, but, but I still need to hear a word from God. What is God still saying here? And so Paul told him, you should have listened. But then he goes on to say in verse 22, he says, and now I exhort you to be of good cheer for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. He says, for there stood by me this night, the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve saying, fear not Paul, thou must be brought to Caesar. And lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee. When I read this, this jumped out of the page. Paul said, in other words, he said, Paul said, I got a word from the Lord. I've got a word from the one I belong to. I've got a word from the one I serve. And the one I serve told me that I will survive this. Who am I speaking to? Who am I speaking to this morning? I have a word from the Lord and the Lord says that you will survive this. And I don't know what your this is and I don't have to know what your this is. But child of God, the Lord told me to tell you that you will survive this. I wish I could get somebody to give him a praise right now. You will survive this. I will survive this. Hallelujah. And this word jumped out of page at me and the Lord went on to say, he says, fear not, Paul, you must be brought before Caesar. 
God never tells us to fear not or to not fear unless there is a reason. Come on, let me help your theology. A reason naturally to fear. Paul was on the ship with them. They were in disobedience. He didn't know how far this thing was going to go. So yes, this mighty man of God had to be told by God to fear not, Paul. Because there are times when we face situations that can bring fear, doubt, and anxiety. Come on, some of y'all don't want to be real. But we must look beyond the natural and hear what God is saying. When Moses was at the Red Sea and Pharaoh was behind him, God told him to fear not. When Joshua was about to take possession and go into the promised territory, the Lord told him to fear not. And so we see over and over when people face insurmountable circumstances, God told them not to fear. Why? Because fear is a normal human, human reaction to an overwhelming circumstance. But let's not miss what comes after God saying, fear not. He said, fear not. Why? Because you must be brought before Caesar. Wait a minute. This right here is shout worthy. And I think we might have missed it. What you may ask, what is shout worthy about being brought to a trial before Caesar. I'm going to tell you what's shout worthy about it. Because Caesar is in Rome. And he was out here in the ocean. In the middle of an ocean. In the middle of a typhoon. Somewhere between Italy and Rome. And God says that fear not Paul. For you must be brought before Caesar in Rome. So no matter what is going on, wherever I am right now, God told him that he must get before Caesar. So no matter what was going on on the ocean, he was going to make it to Rome. So I want to tell somebody, some, some saint of God, that no matter what is going on and wherever you are right now, whatever state you may find yourself in, God is saying you're going to get to Rome. Oh my God, my God. No matter how hard the wind blows, no matter how, how hard it even beats up against the ship. Uh, you will survive this. I need somebody to clap your hands right quick and say, I will survive this. I will survive this. Lord have mercy. I'm going to preach it for myself. I will survive this because my destiny is greater than my disaster. Come on, because I have somewhere to go. I have things to do. I have a mandate from God and the devil doesn't have the authority to kill me before I complete my assignment. Listen, hell doesn't have enough imps to stop God's purpose for your life. Yes, the devil tried to cut my very life off. Y'all hear me? In 2001, in 2001, I was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer with lymph node involvement. In that same year, I end up having a nine surgeries, chemo radiation, immunotherapy, hormone therapy, and every other kind of thing that you can think of. The devil really tried to stop me. And then in the year 2012, I got attacked with a lung disease. Come on. He was really trying to shut my mouth for real. And I was on inhalers. I was on rescue in here all while preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I was on rescue inhalers. I was on maintenance inhalers. Come on. I was on a nebulizer. 
They had to give me a CPAP machine and I'm still getting, getting up telling people that God is a healer and come on and that it is finished. But I want to tell you that, listen, I stand here, sit here rather this morning, healed by the power of God and healed by the finished work of the cross. Listen, let me tell you something. The devil doesn't have enough imps to stop God's purpose for your life. God's purpose for your life will prevail. Your future is fixed, man of God. Your future is fixed, woman of God. And no matter what, you are surviving this. You're surviving this. Oh, somebody ought to give God praise. You will survive this. You're surviving. Glory be to God. And if you look at verse 25, Paul says, he tells them to take courage. He said, I believe God and it will be just like he said. And that's what we have to do. We must have the persuasion just like Paul. I believe God and it will be just like he said. Listen, one word from God is all you need. I need you to hear me, person of God, this morning. One word from God is all you need. Somebody can say, I I just believe God. Come on here. I believe God when I found, and I don't know why I'm giving my testimony because I didn't even plan to do this, but when I found out, come on, that I had stage three breast cancer and I went before the Lord before I even told anyone and the Lord told me, he said, "Um, you shall live. That's all he said. He didn't finish the whole, he, he just told me those three words, you shall live. And when I got up off that floor, I was still sick. I was still hurting. I still had some things to go through, but I had a word from God. And when God told me that I shall live, you shall live. And it doesn't matter what man tells you. It doesn't matter what the doctor tells you. It doesn't matter what the judge says. Come on. If God said you shall live, you shall live. Somebody ought to give God a praise. Who we, this room ain't big enough for me this morning. Hallelujah. One word from God is all you need. Somebody ought to give God praise. I know I'm preaching to somebody this morning. But let me tell you, beloved. Let me tell you the truth. Even in this text, after they got the word, the storm didn't calm down. It got worse. Often when we get a word from God, hear me. Things don't get better. Sometimes they get worse. See, and this is all about our faith being on trial. And God gives you a word in advance so that when the storm comes, he can put your spirit in remembrance of what he said. Come on. The word is to hold you. The word is to keep you. That's why he said the just shall live by faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Come on, come on. It is the word of God. It is faith in the faith. Faith in the word of God. Come on here. That's going to keep you grounded. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And I came to tell somebody, don't forget what he said. When he said it's finished, he meant Just like he meant just that. Because sometimes when we're going through things, come on, we forget that it's finished. And God has to shake us and to remind us that no matter how how great the storm is, if I said you'll survive this, if I said it is finished, if I said it is done, I meant that. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Come on, has he said it? Shall he not do it? Lord, have mercy. You will survive this. Lord, have mercy. Trying to help somebody. But let me bring out something here. In this text, and I appreciate the Holy Spirit being so vivid, the details, nothing in the scripture is just in there, just to be in there. And let me bring out something. Verse 27 lets us know that this was not a one day storm. Verse 27 says that on the 14th night around midnight, 
I said, wait a minute. 14 night? That's two weeks. Two weeks? In a typhoon? Two weeks? In a hurricane on the water? Two weeks? In a tempest? Listen, just the fact that they survived that long, y'all hear me? Even though they were in disobedience, just the fact, the fact that they survived that long shows that God had a greater purpose. And I'm telling somebody right now, just the fact that you survived this long, just the fact that you're still here, just the fact that you're in your right mind. Come on, you may be going through some things, but just the fact that you're still here is proof positive that the hand of God is on your life. Somebody ought to give God some praise. Whew. Two weeks. Lord have mercy. And verse 29 says, they threw out anchors from the ship and they wished for the day. Now this wasn't pretty. This wasn't pretty. They wished for the day. They prayed for daylight. I can see them, Lord. Oh, I can see them. When, when and I can see Paul. Lord, when? Praying for daylight. Lord, when is this night going? in? Let daylight come. Anybody ever felt like that? Come on, be honest. When is this thing going to be over, Lord? When? Verse 30 lets us know that the sailors tried to abandon the ship. You're going to have to look at it when you get to it. They tried to abandon the ship. They pretended like they were letting down the anchors, but they were actually sneaking. They were lowering a lifeboat because they had plans to abandon the ship. Their anxiety, their fear, and their desperation was about to make them try something stupid. They were about to get off a ship and get into a lifeboat in the middle of a typhoon. Now, what sense does that really make? You're on a big ship. But you're going to get out of the ship and get into a little lifeboat. See, the spirit of fear is irrational. No wonder the scripture says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound, sound, rational mind. Come on here. And Paul told them, he saw them and he said, and this is the context of the scripture that we hear. Paul saw them and he told them, he said, except ye abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Y'all hear me? Don't abandon the ship. That's what God is saying. Don't abandon the ship. Don't get off because you're afraid. Don't get off because you're anxious. Don't get off even because things are going wrong. Don't get off because you don't know what is happening. Don't abandon the ship. You hear me? A lot of people will jump ship when things get rough and they don't even realize that they're actually jumping out of a skillet into a frying pan. Honey, if God tells you to stay put, stay your anointed hips put, baby. God's promises are only obtained as we abide by his conditions. Y'all hear me? I'm going to ask you a question. What have you abandoned? What have you abandoned or what have you tried to abandon or what are you even trying to abandon now? Come on, what have you walked away from? What have you put down because you're overwhelmed? Because you're frustrated and because you're angry. It would have been different if God told them to, to, to get off the ship. Come on. But God had told them, except you abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. So what have you abandoned? And if you've abandoned some stuff or you're trying to abandon some stuff or you have put down some stuff, God is telling you to pick it back up. Pick it back up and stay on the ship. Stay on the ship. Stay with God. Stay in the will of God. Come on, there's nothing out there that's worth jumping out of God for. Come on, there ain't no man so fine. There ain't no woman so cute. Come on, there's not a deal that's attractive enough. There is no power, no recognition, no prestige, or anything that is worth jumping off the ship for. 
Come on, we got to stay in the will of God. And that's what we are missing in this day. We are missing people who are going to tell us the truth, who are going to tell us what's right, who's going to tell us about holiness is right. Honey, you need to stay in the ship. I wish I could get somebody to say, I'm staying in the ship. Lord, have mercy. Stay in the will of God. Come on, if come on, if I had an organ right now, I would tell them to put me in A flat. Hallelujah. And I would tell them I'm staying on the ship. Lord have mercy. I'm staying on the ship. Woo-wee. My Lord, not only would Paul's life be spared, but everyone that was with him, their lives would be spared as well. So the soldiers cut the ropes on the lifeboat. And they let it drift away. Y'all hear me? And when daybreak came, they ran the ship aground too soon. And the ship came apart. What do you do when your ship falls apart? God told me to stay. God told me to hang in there. But the ship is falling apart. What do you do? What you do, my beloved, is you do the last thing God told you to do. You abide in the ship. And you got to be determined to ride it out. You got to be determined to ride it out. Some people don't have a commitment that goes beyond their feelings. But when God says something, you got to be committed to ride it out. To ride it out. In other words, I'm going to do what God says. No matter what, I'm staying with the ship. And anyway, why would God tell you to stay with something that is falling apart? And I don't have all the answers to that. But sometimes God tells us to do things that just don't make sense to our natural minds. But if God says it, you've got to stay with the ship. Abide in the ship. And I would even venture to say that Paul was probably the only one that was saved on this ship. But guess what? This is another point. Even though he was saved, he had to swim just like everybody else. Hear me. We, this country, this world, we are in this thing together. And God is telling all of us The same thing. Y'all better hear me. The saved and the unsaved. Come on here. We all must believe God. Because God is the only one that can fix this. Not the president. Not not the legislator. Not the politicians. Come on here. Not the medical community. Come on. God is telling everybody the same thing. We all must obey God. He's telling the sinner the same thing that he's telling the saint. A lot of people say, well, 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 this is judgment on the sinner. This is judgment on the saint. Listen, God telling all of us the same thing. He's telling the sinner to repent and he's telling the saint to repent too. Y'all don't want to hear me. He's telling the sinner to turn from their wicked ways and he's telling the saints to turn from their wicked ways as well. Come on here. God is talking to everybody. In this pandemic. And everybody need to listen. It's not one message to the sinner. And then another message to the saint. It's the same message. Unless we all return to the altar. Unless we all return to the foundation. Of Christ and him crucified. Come on. God is the only one that can fix this thing. We all have to trust God in this. Come on. There ain't no superstars. And no superheroes in in this. God will not let anybody get the credit for this. God is going to show everybody that this is not going to be done by power and by might, but by his spirit. Lord, have mercy to God. The same message for everybody. Let me move on. When the ship came apart, the soldiers wanted to kill the prisoners. And this was something serious because if any prisoners escaped Under the watch of a Roman guard, that guard would be killed. But Paul had favor with the centurion. Verse 43 says, but the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose. They purposed to kill them. 
the devil meant to kill you, beloved. He meant to kill you. Can I tell you something here? I'm telling somebody right now. You may not even be in the will of God for your life right now. But you were spared. Not because of you. But because someone else with favor of God was on the ship. You hear what I'm saying? The soldier's life was spared because Paul was on the ship. And some of us, the only reason that we're still here, even when we were in our mess and even when we were in our sin, was because somebody was praying. Y'all hear me? Oh, yeah, somebody. And then on the other side, some people are spared because of God's favor on the saints. Some places would have gone down already, but God held it up because of you. And that's not a reason to be proud or arrogant, but God did it. And so the centurion ordered everyone that could swim. He said, y'all jump overboard and swim to the shore. But everyone that can't swim, he told him in verse 44, he said, and the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they all escaped safe to land. Hmm. Had they gotten into the lifeboat, they would have been so far away from the ship that there wouldn't have been anything for them to hold on to. Lord, that's a message all in itself. They made it safely to land because they held on to the ship. Y'all hear me? No, it wasn't the whole ship. We must make sure that we stay in the right place. So that we can hold on. And all you may be able to grab on is a board or a broken piece. But they still came in, y'all hear me, on pieces of the ship. And so you got to hold on to the ship. Hold on to your faith. We used to sing a song that said, I'm just holding on. I'm holding on and I won't let go of my faith. Can I get somebody right quick to just say, I'm holding on to my faith. I'm holding on to my faith. Matter of fact, I'm holding on to the faith. I'm holding on to the faith of Christ and him crucified. Come on, I'm holding on and I won't let go. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. See, this is a faith fight. But you will survive this, but you got to hold on. You got to abide with the ship. You will survive this. Hold fast. We walk by faith and not by sight. So the apostle Paul, I'll say it again, got wet just like everybody else. He had to swim afloat just like everybody else. So what am I saying? The same word that applies to you applies to me, me as well. I have to hold on just like you do. The same word that worked for Paul worked for them. There were 276 of them, but they all made it to shore. They all survived. Yes, they suffered some loss. Yes, they took some hits, but they made it. Listen, dear child of God, there are things that will affect you simply because you are in the world. Come on, don't let them fool you with this franken faith. You will get wet, come on here, and you'll have to swim or either float. But come on, the same word that went for them that went for Paul goes for us too. You've got to hold on to the ship. Paul had to hold on as well. And you might come in on a board. You may come in on a broken piece. But I declare to you, child of God, you will make it safely. You will survive this. I'm holding on to my faith. Lord, have mercy. You got to stay with the ship. Stay with it. He said, except you abide, you won't make it because everything is going down but the word of God. You will survive this if you don't abandon the faith. You may get some bruises and you might take some hits, but you will survive this. Who am I preaching to? I guess I'm preaching to myself. Lord, have mercy. Who are we? You will survive this. 
And as I say so often, much of the church has done a poor job of preparing people for shipwrecks. Huh? People are disgruntled and discouraged and want to give up on God. And come on, they're through with the church because they're sick. The jobs have shut down. They've lost loved ones. Uh, many people who really love God now are close to eviction. And they were told that if they have faith, if they confess and if they sow and not fear, these things would not happen. But these things happen. And now they are perplexed. Come on, and they don't know what to do. But listen, let me tell you something. Uh, the devil lied. That's not real biblical faith. Because if you look at the examples of biblical faith, they were people of faith because they endured. Y'all hear what I'm saying? The Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver him out of them all. The Bible says that all who live godly shall suffer persecution. He tells us in his word that in the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The Bible tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You hear me? Not seen. There are some things that you won't see coming there are some things that will hit your life. Hear me. It will hit your life and it will break your life apart sometimes. But you will survive this if you hold on to the ship. We must heed the instructions of the Lord. Y'all hear me? And obey them. Oh my God. You got to believe God. You will survive this. Come on. You can't abandon the ship. You got to ride this thing out and you got to hold on to whatever peace you can grab hold to. If I hold on to the ship, if I stay in the faith, I will survive this. So what am I saying, beloved? There are things that are going to happen. Come on here. But you got to do like them. You got to commit to riding it out. You got to commit to staying with God. I don't know about you, but I've determined I'm going to stay with God. Just like the apostle Paul said, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, come on, no height nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God. Lord have mercy. Come on. I know the scripture, but I can't get it out right now, but y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> come on. I am persuaded that nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God. I am going to stay with God. I want you to stay with God. You will survive this. You be blessed of the Lord. And until next time, keep on looking up.